Chicago, uh, yes. you are a UN inspector. Is this yes. a message yes. that you take uh, when you uh, go uh, visiting? Uh, I believe maybe it's uh, maybe uh, uh, a, a too much pessimistic view. Because I believe, first of all, you have to start setting the rules. And indeed, there setting are... What? Setting the, what rules? The, about the right to access information. There are what's, rules... What's there blocking are, the access there information? There are rules uh, going back to 1946 uh, with the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It does set that each human being has the right to access information. All right. This has, so been, this, this has been proclaimed by executive heads of UN system organizations in 97. It has been proclaimed in other international documents. And therefore, and? the policy setting is important. Now, how do you implement it? You implement it if indeed you do consider that what drives democracy is recognition that we, the peoples, are the one who drive democracy. And if that is the case, not only governments have a role to play by abiding to their own words as set in international documents, but civil society organizations, NGOs, have been playing a very important role in making sure that governments adhere to the rule of law and the right to access information. I don't see where, for example, in China, they've managed to persuade the Chinese government that they should allow free access to the internet. Well, uh, uh, It's not my, working very well, is it? Well, mind you, I think there are changes uh, almost in every country based precisely on the power of information. There are countries where you could not listen to the BBC. Yeah. But, but, but you know very well that it's, it, it's possible to do it. And I would also add that when we talk about information and communication technology, you should not see only the internet. Connectivity, yes. yes. But yeah. obviously, ICT also means radio. It means TV. When you look at the BBC and CNN, sometimes you can access these two media when you cannot access your own national TV. And therefore, it does make a difference to make sure that you do not limit yourself to the, what is called the new technologies and see in ICT only the Internet. Internet is important, certainly, but it's not the only tool indeed, in terms indeed, of accessing indeed, information. Indeed. We're going to have to look at this another way now. It's touching on the issue of governance here, but I want to show us our third video. Uh, because it looks at some of the other media that play into the issue of human rights and their potential use for good or bad. There are a billion transistor radios in the world. For the 50% of the world's population who've never made a phone call, radio is the information highway. But in Rwanda, this tool for peaceful development was turned into a medium for hatred. Between April and June 1994, an estimated 800,000 Rwandans were killed in the space of 100 days. A Hutu militia group, the Interahamwe, used radio to whip up hatred. Today, that same medium is being used to help rebuild the nation, reporting, for example, on the Gachacha traditional courts. Like the truth and reconciliation hearings in South Africa, they're helping the survivors come to terms with the past. Radio handsets are being distributed, and radio programs specifically tailored towards children. They're achieving results and leading towards a more balanced view. Radio is accessible and cheap in the remotest areas. The question is that while there's so much preoccupation with the internet, mobile phones and so forth, is there a case to be made for putting more resources into technologies like clockwork radio that directly benefit the poor? The one panelist that I haven't come to, and, and forgive me for being so tardy here, <laughs> is Rory Steer. Rory, you're in the radio business. Presumably you wouldn't have any problems with the message there, but uh, beyond mere commercial enthusiasms. I was pleased to see in the, in the, in the clip a lot of wind-up radios being used, but wind-up radios do guarantee access to information 24-7. If you look at, uh, at education today in Africa, it is common cause that two teachers are dying in some countries for every one that's being trained. So when we speak about educating the youth of Africa, and I am African, so that is, that is my continent, and when we speak about edu educating the youth of Africa, we have to look at distance education. We have to look at, uh, at, at, at every 
tool, whether it's old technology, new technology, whatever it might be, in order to reach these kids and, and not end up with another lost generation um, on our continent. The barrier to, to all of that is electricity. Africa is only 22% electrified, according to the World Bank. All of the technologies that we are sitting and discussing here today have to be discussed in partnership with sustainable energy solutions. And presumably, when you say you're in the energy business now, you're advocating the use of clockwork technology for more than just radios. No, not necessarily just uh, clockwork or wind-up, human-powered technology, but solar-powered, wind, hybrids, um, whatever it might be, self, uh, fuel cells in, in, in the future. What will not happen is that you know, the, the major governments of, 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 of the developed world are not going to allow nuclear power stations to be built in the developing world, although they're very happily advocating them to be, to be recommenced in the U.S. and the U.K. They're not going to, in five generations of our bloodlines, they're not going to, to, uh, um, to electrify Africa. It's just not going to happen. You know, 22% includes North Africa. Sub-Saharan Africa, the actual access to electricity is significantly lower than that. I believe that, uh, that the mobile phone industry, the barrier to its growth beyond where it is today at 52 million users on the continent of Africa is energy. I think just to pick up on the point of energy, I think even if we're trying to solve the same kinds of issues, we have new solutions at our disposal and new kinds of approaches which can combine the provision of power and and um, um, internet technologies. Can I, we, we have a representative of the World Bank here who I, who I do want to, uh, to hear something from before, before we wrap this. Uh, you've heard many advocates for many solutions here. At the end of the day, some of the time, you write the checks. What are you confident in and who are you confident about to deliver what you, as well as anyone, know that the world needs? So we have to have confidence in the private sector. And in any case, the amounts we are uh, talking about are amounts that, you know, not even an organization like the World Bank, you know, is able to provide in terms of, you know, improving access to infrastructure. We can certainly make a difference and uh, we can certainly, you know, try to go where the market isn't going. Uh, but I think, you know, if you look at the investment needs, I think, you know, you have to look at the private sector. How much did you invest so far, the World Bank, in connectivity in Africa? Well, it's, I it's can tell you... It's not one percent of your credit volume. It, uh, I mean, it depends, you know, how you measure it. But, for example, uh, our International Finance Corporation, uh, which is the private sector arm, has invested more than a billion dollars in uh, telecommunications operations in the developing world. Uh, but do that, you again, believe, is Do you believe in sector. a digital dividend? Does the World Bank actually believe... In a digital dividend, uh, we that, certainly that the believe, poor will be helped by investment in this sector. We certainly believe that uh, information and communication technologies can make a big uh, contribution uh, to the development process. Of course, we have to keep in mind that one billion people in this world live without access to basic needs such as food, safe, safe shelter, health care, uh, and uh, uh, clean water. So there are a, a whole variety of development challenges, and I think we constantly have to ask ourselves, well, where do we get the biggest uh, development bank for the aid buck? Uh, but at the end of the day, we do believe that information and communication te uh, technologies can make a positive contribution in that context. 